card game, the Chicago Bears versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with George Allen. And first of all, the weather. It's gray, a threat of rain, temperature in the middle, 40s. No appreciable wind. But now, what about the teams, George? And let's start with the Bears. Well, the Bears, then, it used to be that if you stopped Peyton, you stopped the Bears' offense. With Phipps at quarterback, we found out that the Bears can win. They came from behind when the Rams' defense stopped Peyton and won the ball game. So I think that we'll, we'll have an interesting game from the Bears' standpoint. Peyton running, and Phipps mixing in his passing game. Now, great backs make great lines. You've told us that before. Is there a difference, an appreciable difference, between the two offensive lines? I think the Bears have one of the outstanding lines in football. I like those two guards. I like uh, Noah Jackson and Reva Sori. Well, those are the pregame thoughts. Right now, it's the Chicago Bears and the Philadelphia Eagles in the That's NFC good. wild card game. Take a look at the Bears with Mike Phipps, Walter Payton, and Dave Williams in the backfield. The tight end is Mike Cobb, and the wide receivers, Ricky Watts and Brian Bashnagel. Up front, Albrecht, Jackson, Neal, Sorry, and Lick. And Henry, who had a broken leg last year, trying to do some running this year. He got by Buffon. He's to the 45, to the 40, 35, 30, and steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line of Chicago. Wally Henry. Montgomery and Harris, and Montgomery is the deep back. Second man, Wilbert Montgomery. And he's inside the 20 to the 19. He was just able to get away from Gary Campbell. Second man, Montgomery. And he's going to be wrapped up and brought down by Hartenstein, who came across nicely. And then Alan Page. On a long count by Jaworski. Carmichael. Harold Carmichael has caught nine touchdown passes in his last nine games counting today. And the Eagles are on the scoreboard. Out of the eye with Peyton the deep lane. Walter Peyton with Williams trying to block on Wilkes and it's a good block and Herman Edwards brings him out. But a good block by Dave Williams on Reggie Wilkes, and that sprung Payton. Well, here's one of the great backs in all of football, Walter Payton, on a toss from the I formation, running weak side. Here's his running style. He's carrying the ball with both hands. Now he puts it in his left arm, lowers his shoulder, keeps his balance. This is what they have to do to win this football game. They have to be able to run the ball first and pass second. Just across the 39 for the Bears, Bashnagel in motion. Haynes is wide left. Here comes Peyton. Williams blocking that time on Randy Logan, and that made the play work. So Dave Williams blocked Wilkes to the left, Logan to the right, and has made the contribution for Peyton's run. Well, I think this is his favorite run. It's a toss from the eye where the guards pulling. They got two tremendous guards who have the mobility and quickness to pull and watch Peyton how he keeps driving and breaks tackles very seldom will one man bring Walter Peyton down Mike Phipps is quite a story a first round draft choice for Cleveland in 1970 in order to get that pick Cleveland traded away Paul Warfield in Miami he started one playoff game and it was a bad one Seven years ago, he was intercepted five times by Miami, but of course, that's ancient yeah, history. And I think the Bears made a good trade. Jim Fix gave Cleveland a first for Fix. Play action fake and a quick out to Carmichael. They set up a screen, and that'll shake him across to midfield, and down he goes at the Bear 45. Gary Fensick making the tackle. Uh, corner pattern and has made some big plays on it. This time it's Walter Payton with Williams blocking and Payton still on his feet and goes out of bounds having picked up the first down along the way. He got to the 30 yard line and Jerry Robinson who figures to be with Payton all day long pushed him out of bounds. Jerry Robinson here, here's the toss from the eye which I think is his favorite play and the Bears are doing what they do best run the football Jerry Robinson with his 4-6 speed gets over there and makes the plays. And Phipps will try it again. Quick over the middle to Dave Williams, his favorite receiver out of the backfield, and they stack him up at the 34. Third and six on the 35. Phipps 
with time, and he has Bashnagel at midfield. John Shara drops him, and they pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. Well, Bashnagel's a hard-nosed football player. Phipps likes him in the clutch. He's got good hands. He'll come across the middle. Here he is, cutting across the middle, wide open. Phipps had a little bit too much time to throw from a defensive standpoint. Good execution. Play action fake to Payton, and then they release to Payton. And he is grabbed from behind by Reggie Wilkes and brought down shy about the 41-yard line. And he'll have to get to the 40 for the first down. Bashnagel left and watch right. Here comes Payton with Wiggins blocking on punting. And he picks up the first down. And I'll tell you, Dave Williams does a fine job in helping Walter Payton pick up the yardage. Yes, yes, he does. He's a good blocker. Maybe we'll see this. With a guy like Payton, you've got to have a fullback who can block. Now watch Williams driving out Bunny inside out. Didn't make a real good block, but it was effective enough for, for Payton to get the first down. Bashnagel right and watch left. and trying to rush, but there's Greg Latta, the tight end, who gets inside the 35. They drop him just about there. Jerry Robinson, along with number 78, Carl Hairston, making the hit. Watts goes left. Phipps releasing it to Peyton to the 25, 20, 15, knocked out of bounds. And the Bears are on a roll as they get down to about the five-yard line. John Shara racing over to finally push Peyton out of bounds along with Jerry Robinson. Well, two things on this. Phipps is going to his backs against the, against the 34. He's got plenty of protection, good time. Peyton comes underneath. Now he runs with it and picks up big yardage in the first down. The Eagles are not putting very much pressure on Phipps so far in this ballgame. Walter Payton hurtling and has broken the plane. Touchdown, Chicago. From that goal line plane, take a look at Walter Payton. Watch him go over the top, and that's the way to do it. Over the top. He broke and that's the plane. Broken it. No, qu no question. Here's the blocking. Coming off. Man for man blocking. The Eagles are a little bit high there. You, you want your defensive lineman low. And it's Leroy Harris with Montgomery blocking on him. And he did not quite get to about the 33 before he was knocked out of bounds. a quick release to Camfield for the first down. And Walter Shy finally tackled him, but not before he rolled out at the 42-yard line to pick it up. Leroy Harris back in there with Montgomery. Play action fake to Montgomery. Over the middle to Carmichael to the 40-yard line, and Gary Fensick ankles him down at the 40. Well, Great fake to Walter Payton. Yeah. And out to Carmichael as they try to set up a screen and it was led by Muckenstern who brings him down at the 32 yard line. Wilbert Montgomery and there he goes all across the 25 wow. yard line. Gary Fensick and Doug Plank trying to pinch him down but they broke open the right side of the bear line. <laughs> Juggled by Jaworski but he gets rid of it quickly. And a great catch is made by Charlie Smith. I don't know how he held on to that one. Terry Smith nailed it. On the far side of the field, a member of the Bears would be down. Gary Fencing. So Len Walterscheid, three years out of Southern Utah State, number 23. He'll be replacing Gary Fencing, but what a pair oh. of shoes to fit. <laughs> Wilbert Montgomery going outside. Ellis can't get him. Plank finally brought him down along with Walterscheid, but he got inside the 15, which should be enough for the first down. Tony Franklin, who set a Phillies record for points scored, 105, and he kicked 23 field goals. He 
He's kicked three, 30 or more. The spot at the 19, the 29-yard kick is good. And the Eagles make sure they don't come away empty. Dick Vermeil, the first special coach in the NFL, George. Yes, he was. He Thanks the, to you. was with the L.A. Rams, and he did a, did a great job. One thing about Dick Vermeil, nobody will outwork him. First and 10 on the Bear 30. Williams and Peyton behind Phipps. Walter Payton hit from the side by Hairston and dropped shy of the 35-yard line. Third and seven on the Bear 33. Slot left for Mike Phipps with Watts going wide right. And Phipps with a little time throws to Watts who makes the catch, I believe, at the 48-yard line. A diving catch by Ricky Watts. Now, I'll tell you something here that's developing in this game. Our fans might want to watch it. Phipps has had time to throw. We'll start giving you the pass protection time. He's got plenty of time to survey the field, and he hits Watts. Now, Watts made a good catch, which should help his confidence after dropping an easy one. He's the kid out of Tulsa who got a chance to play in the 11th game, and he's been magnificent. Se second round pick, and he's made some big plays. He makes the tough catch. The last hurrah for Doug Buffon. Right. He's Doug Buffon, 55, is the last player that George Hallis coached. He came to the Bears in 1966. He's a native of Chicago. It's nice to have a guy that can play more than one position. He can play the left side. He can play the middle. He's called the signals. He's always ready to play. And one other thing about what football has done for Doug Buffon, both his grandfather and his father were coal miners, and football got him out into the sunshine. Harrison Montgomery behind Jaworski. Play action fake to Montgomery. And heat by Hartenstein. Hartenstein dropped him at the five. And the Philadelphia fans have all the air come out of the balloon on that sack. Smith wide left. Carmichael on the right side. And it'll be Montgomery cutting back against the green out across the 15 to the 19 yard line. Gary Campbell making the tackle, or he's off to the races. And Baskin to the right. Peyton is on a wing, but now deep man out of the eye. Quick out to Watts. And Watts across the 40 to the 35. John Shara bulldogs him out of bounds. Again, the same play that the Eagles used with Carmichael. A tremendous first down call. Quick screen to Watts. You can see Watts has fixed the, the toss to, to Peyton, and that's his favorite play. Now, Watts shows his running ability here. Good, safe play. You should never have anything other than an incomplete pass on that play. Pass Nagel in motion. Second man is Peyton following the block of Williams, and he's across the 30. He has to get to the 23-yard line with a first down. Frank LeMaster able to make the tackle. Watts left, Bassnagel right, second and five. And here goes Campfield. Reggie Wilkes brings him down and make that Willie McClendon instead of Campfield. That's a 24-yard pass penalty. Since it was in the end zone, the ball is spotted on the one. trying to burrow in and I believe that the Eagles might have been yeah. offside and Peyton is in yeah. there anyway that's that same play again what we call M hunch good sound play you don't care what the defense is and somewhere in there is Walter Peyton yeah. with a second touchdown yeah. in the game Hamfield and Montgomery Jaworski dropped it and falling on it is Alan Page uh -oh. Alan Page fell on the ball 13 years out of Notre Dame and Page comes up with the big fumble recovery. So Bob Thomas determined to come away with something. The spot by Bashnagel at the 21. So it's a 31 yard field goal attempt. It is up. It is good. 10 Bears. The crowd is booing the fact that Jaworski stayed on the ground that time. They want to see him go for seven. Here goes Harris going for daylight. And he fumbled, but then recovered it. He was hit head on by Len Walderscheid. The clock is down to three seconds, well, and Philadelphia has called timeout. Hampton is 
putting pressure on Jaworski, but he is knocked out by Sizemore. One-handed catch by Harris as he goes out of bounds, and the clock shows we have run out of time. Peyton back in there with Dave Williams. And it'll be Peyton with Williams out in front. A flag on the play, and Peyton is out the open. To midfield. Still going as he got away from Jerry Robinson. Herman Edwards still trying to drag him down. And uh, Herman Edwards got him back inside the one. There's but a there's flag. a flag on flag the play. On the play. Chief. Illegal motion against the Bears will nullify the play. Both of those good guards pulling, leading the play. Good blocking. Jerry Robinson will get a hand on him, but that's not enough. Shara is blocked out of it by Watts, and good finally Herman Edwards has him by the collar. A good straight arm by Peyton. And it's you all know. for naught. Intercepted by Allen Ellis at the 35. Ellis to the 40, to the 45. Still on his feet to about the Eagle 40-yard line. And Alan Ellis makes the interception, and that snaps a Jaworski string. Bashnagel right and Watts left. Bashnagel in motion. And here comes Peyton. He has Sorry and Williams blocking. And is knocked out of bounds by Bobby Howard and Jerry Robinson. Carmichael is wide left, and Smith goes right. Play action fake to Montgomery. Jaworski releasing to Montgomery and Gary Campbell dropped him as he crossed the 40-yard line. First and 10 from the 44. To Carmichael, and he makes the reception and goes to the 41-yard line. Alan Ellis yeah. chopped down the tree at the 41. Montgomery with Harris blocking. Good nose-to-nose -nose block by Leroy Harris on Doug Plank, and that made the play go for a good five yards. Bunting and Robinson on top of it, bringing him down as he got out beyond the 47-yard line. That's the same, the same play that was called back because of illegal motion. Strong side sweep, both guards pulling Peyton, following his blockers. Willie McClendon following Dave Williams, and he's very close to the first down. Bashnagel in motion. pass over the middle to Bashnagel and he gets across the 40 but not enough for the first down he had to get to the 36 and he'll spot it at the 37 Frank well, LeMaster made an important tackle that time er earlier we said Bashnagel in the clutch he runs good routes he's got good hands he's tough the back's release Flips over the middle to Walter Payton He's jitterbugging at the 25 and gets down to the 22. Jerry Robinson is on his back and Frank LeMaster at the ankles. First down for the Bears. Well, Phipps had all day to throw here. He wanted to go deeper. And then he takes Peyton on an angle pattern. And Wal Walter always is going forward. In motion is Fastnagel. Going to Watts on a screen. Albrecht blocking down as he gets inside the 10-yard line. LeMaster and Herman Edwards. The back's release. The pass to Bashnagel. Intercepted in the end zone. Bobby Howard, number 23, makes a big interception for the Eagles. He's in there now with Montgomery. with time and he's going to run he's to the 20 to the 25 to the 30 to the 35 and he has picked up a big first down to keep the drive alive Virgil Livers you know made the tackle
Jaworski has Camfield being chased by Muckenstern, and there he goes, Billy Camfield. Jackson and he gets out across the 25 yard line. Second and six on the Chicago 26. Pips over the middle to Greg Latta, the tight end, and Reggie Wilkes upended him. He lost the ball, but uh, let's see. to Bashnagel to the 40 upended by Wilkes at the 43 and it's a first down Bears. Again in the clutch who does he go to? 84. Brian Bashnagel. During the regular season Phipps went to Bashnagel 30 times. Oh. An underneath pattern good call possession type pass. Dan Hampton, double nines, fell oh. on him. The rookie out of Arkansas. Uh oh, a fight. And a fight on the field. Jim Osborne has to be restrained with center Guy Morris. Oh. Osborne and Morris ready to knock holes in each other. On a draw, it's Wilbert Montgomery, Martin Stein, and Page put the squeeze on him. But he got to the 19-yard line. Good snap, good hold, good kick. The kick is good. And in seven on the 44. Back stay in the block, and Jaworski wow. swallowed up by Dan Hampton. Yeah. Phipps, no good. And it is intercepted by Herman Edwards. He's at the 30-yard line looking for a block, and he's going to run out of bounds. Wow. Herman Edwards. You might remember the miracle victory against the New York Giants when he picked up the Joe Pisarchi fumble. Now he makes a key interception. 34, two minutes and 15 seconds left. Wilbert Montgomery with a block from Sizemore and a good play by Doug Plank. Oh, he's, he is playing a whale of a he, game. He's a heck of a football player. I, I really enjoy watching him play. Doug Plank, number 46, making yet another fine defensive play. The ball's already kicked, and now his foot hits Campbell in the chest there. Boom, right there. And running into the kicker by the receivers. First down. On the 45 for the Eagles, Jaworski to Montgomery, and Wilbert breaking across the 50. Hartenstein and Schmidt bring him down inside the 45 of the Bears. That's his 125 left. And time is running out at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Three, two, one. And the Bears are history, and the Eagles are still alive. That's the end of the game. The score, the Philadelphia Eagles 27, the Chicago Bears 17. The NFL Today will be back after this word from your local station. After giving three different quarterbacks a shot at the starting job, Armstrong settled on Mike Phipps, and the 10-year veteran rewarded him by winning nine of the 10 games he started. But the Bears passing takes second billing to the ground game and its star, Walter Payton. The remarkable Payton won the conference rushing title for the fourth straight year, a matter of boring routine for the Chicago superstar. Number 84, Brian Bashnagel, got the Bears into Eagle territory. Sticking with the short, high percentage pass, Phipps threw in the flat to Walter Payton. Payton did the rest on his own. The 31-yard play put the ball inside the Eagle 5. 
And two plays later, it was Peyton again, wrapping up the drive with the tying touchdown. After a somewhat sluggish start, the Bears moved the ball with surprising ease and quickness against the Eagles, closing out the first period with a score tied at seven. As the first half began to wind down, the Eagles fell victim to three pivotal plays that changed the tempo of the game. The first was by defensive end Mike Hartenstein, number 73, who barged through to make a key sack on Jaworski. Eagles were forced to punt thereafter, and the kick was not a good one. After inheriting good field position, the Bears took advantage of the second Eagle error. The victim this time was cornerback Herman Edwards, number 46. Edwards' pass interference on Bashnagel gave Chicago a first down on the one-yard line. That last yard was a tough one, but Walter Payton got it two plays later, giving the Bears their first lead of the game. At the beginning of the second half, the Bears looked to Walter Payton, their spiritual leader, to provide the big play that would put them over the hump. On his first carry of the second half, number 34 did all that and more as he exploded on a spectacular 85-yard run. Peyton's incredible tour de force seems certain to open the floodgates for more Chicago points. However, a ruinous motion penalty that had no bearing on the play itself canceled the run and should have turned the ebb and flow of this game back to the Eagles. Momentum proved fickle and short-lived when Ron Jaworski threw into the teeth of the Bears' coverage. Number 48, Allen Ellis, returned the interception 25 yards, but again the Bears fell prey to missed opportunity when they failed to cash in on yet another break. Head coach Neil Armstrong's only recourse was to rely on his defense, a unit that ranked second in the NFC and one that was almost solely responsible for the Chicago Bears' stunning entry into the playoffs. Number 17 went underneath the Chicago secondary for 16 yards, then split the Bears short and deep coverage beautifully for a 29-yard touchdown. With the score tied at 17, Chicago's offensive line immobilized the Eagle rush, allowing Mike Phipps a clear sideline to Peyton. The Bears traveled to the Philadelphia 10 when disaster struck, and the tide turned irrevocably in the Eagles' favor. Phipps tried to force a pass into the end zone and played right into the hands of cornerback Bobby Howard. Three times the Bears had opportunities to score in the period and each time they came up empty. The Bears effectively stemmed the threat of Montgomery, but in crucial situations their defense broke down. With a third and 15 from the 15, Jaworski scrambled out of desperate trouble. Jaworski's 20-yard run set up the Bears for the game-breaker by Billy Campfield. Thank you. 
Campfield's 63-yard explosion gave the Eagles the lead for the first time since the initial quarter. With over seven minutes remaining in the game, the Bears abandoned Peyton for the pass, a strategy that played right into the hands of the tenacious, hard-hitting Eagle defense. Mike Phipps is an excellent passer when he can use the threat of the run. Without it, he can be quite mortal and rates only as an ordinary quarterback in catch-up situations. The most critical Chicago mistake was a fumble by running back Dave Williams, number 22. With three minutes left, Mike Phipps launched his last fatal pass. Although Herman Edwards lost his compass and traveled a lateral course, his interception drove the final spike in Chicago's desperate effort to rally themselves back into the game. For the Bears and Neil Armstrong, this day would be reviewed in the harsh light of the screening room, where the game films would reveal the four touchdowns that went a glimmering. Their effort was valiant, an effort that was reflected throughout the second half of 1979, a season that saw them emerge from also rans into a legitimate contender, one that lacks only depth in a few key positions from becoming a championship team. <laughs>